here with James Canton. He's our keynote speaker of innovation. James, all right, so everybody talks to you about the future. Everybody wants to know, pick inside of your brain, wants to know what you think the future will hold. Let's take it back. Let's go, let's go to the past. So tell me how your past has helped you figure out and, and be able to predict what's going on in the future. What, what is it? Let's, let's start with Apple. For well, even before, even before, before that. Yeah, so before Apple, yeah. I was a, um, I was a um, policy advisor okay. uh, when I was a young man in government, in Washington for the federal government. Mm -hmm. And we were trying to understand why people, large populations of people were getting ill or, you know, why some population, part of the population was uh, healthier than others. Okay. And, um, you know, that led me to try to understand change particularly around health and population, which was really kind of, you know, countries spend a lot of money on health, we all do, and this was an opportunity to try to apply forecasting. So we, could, we knew, for instance, based on some research, that if you smoked or you had, you know, bad eating habits and you drank excessively or you're overweight, it, it, those are change forces that actually, from a big data point of view, would decrease your chances of uh, living longer and also would increase your chances of getting ill. So I built some platforms that try to understand that. Okay. So that was my first kind of forecasting experience. Okay. And then I did And you some, liked it, you loved it. Well, I, I thought it was interesting. I didn't okay. say I loved it, okay. right. but I thought that the idea of thinking about the future and then having some good models to help understand, you know, how an entire society might be healthier by changing behaviors was very intriguing to me. And then um, I did join uh, Apple when I was um, in the beginning with working with Steve Jobs. And, uh, you know, Steve said kind of, you know, what do you want to do? And, you know, the opportunity uh, was to, you know, I got a lot of questions. Well, you're kind of a futurist forecasting. Why do you want to work here? And I said, well, because nobody understands yet where technology is going. And I think that technology will change the future. So they said, great. So I learned about business, worked on technology, and kind of that fused, that really catalyzed my ideas because in 1979, 1980, technology was just really beginning. Right, well, so you already were considered a futurist back then, and Steve was well, able to... I was doing that kind of work. Okay. I, I had made a decision that I wanted to, I was a, like a, a student of Alvin Toffler's who wrote a book called Future Shock. Yes, yeah. And I worked with Alvin. And then what happened was that I realized, I was only in my 20s, that I needed to spend 10 years, uh -huh. uh, you know, understanding and forecasting in, in business and social policy to develop, develop my skills. So I saw my own future. Uh -huh. okay. And I needed to work towards that. So I wasn't yet a futurist, but I wanted to aspire to be by getting experience. You know, I got my PhD in social science and I worked in, as an entrepreneur and I worked at Apple and, and I did forecasting. And, I, and then ultimately my clients would say to me, gee, we really need to understand how this thing, the internet this thing. or computing would, is gonna change markets and customers and, and, and could you help us figure that out? Okay. And nobody was really asking those questions and I'd been at Apple, and all of a sudden I started realizing, wait a minute, it's just not just the internet, but then you have to ask questions about demographics. And then, wait a minute, climate change seems like it's emerging, and well, that means that it's linked to energy, and then that's linked to uh, trade and economics. Well, I think, so I did a stint as an investment banker, a policy maker, advisor to government, an entrepreneur, and helping build companies, consult with companies, and then finally, I could start to, in 1990, uh -huh. I started to realize, okay, I've amassed enough. Information, research, you've touched into different yeah, areas enough. Right, to be able to professionally, you know, uh, say, okay, I have enough to be able to be um, a value, mm -hmm. and then marketing that value, okay. and it's kind of taken off from them. Okay, okay, it's very, it's, I mean, but part, part of it is, you know, for uh, people always ask me, how did you come to Futures? After you know a lot of a lot of failures of trying projects, being part of business, working in government, so I have this mixture of things: banking, 
finance. I think the difference between my practice and a lot of others, I'm really grounded in business. I'm grounded both in policy and business. And I really have a sense of what doesn't work as much as what does in order to be able to create the future. And I think that's valuable experience. And do you think that that's just a knowledge that you have or you learned it through no, no, those different, it. you yeah, learned it yeah, over time? I, I don't think I have any special genius okay. or knowledge. I, I do think I'm funnier than other <laughs> futurists. Uh, and some people think, you know, boy, you're, you know, you've got such, you're such a brainiac. You got, no, no, no. I've, I've worked very hard and, uh, you know, I'll tell any, um, I think of myself as a, you know, digital entrepreneur. I've had companies, some of the companies failed, some of the companies succeeded. Apple was one that succeeded. But I've learned uh, through trial and error, you know, to try to get it. What does it take to be able to forecast? Well, and that's, you're answering my questions that I had for you. This because is perfect. Because I'm, I'm a futurist. I'm <laughs> predicting the future of this interview, right? So therefore I know where it's going. You're really good. You're, or you looked at my sheet maybe. No, I didn't. Some I massive didn't. Oh, cheat sheet. I'm collapsing time as we speak. <laughs> collapsing time, like what you talked about. That's right. Um, okay, well, so what does it take to be a futurist? What is, what's, or what do you think? Like if somebody, is, is it just a, a way of looking that can be learned? Or is it just the way pulling certain pieces of information and then the yeah. way that you process that, a person yeah. processes it? Well, is it a unique uh, skill or is it something to be learned? I think that it is a unique skill that can be learned, okay. but it requires being a general systems analyst. Okay. So I'm a trained social scientist. Okay. So that means, you know, my, in my doctoral work, I, I I looked at all the forecasting and strategic planning models and decided, okay, some worked, some didn't work. Uh -huh. So I think being a general systems theorist, you need to be able to know a bit about economics and business and, and then uh, healthcare and, and different areas that you're gonna forecast. For instance, I stay away from certain areas that are not my thing. But, un but the underlying framework of forecasting, um, again, has to be Again, I'm a different kind of future. I'm more of an enterprise futurist, so I have an economic framework. I have a framework that is much more based not on you know, interesting creative ideas, but I've been in business, so the, the bottom line, or return on investment, or will customers do that? I spend half my time talking to customers, trying to understand how they see the future, or identifying problems before I create solutions. So when I help my clients think about, you know, what's the future of a digital or a mobile platform or digital money or the next generation of personalized, you know, consumer genomic uh, tests or I have kind of an unfair advantage because I'm dealing with a lot of innovators, but also I'm dealing with companies that have the ability to actually make a change or make a future come together around the world. Okay. So I have a bit of an unfair advantage. Okay, okay, unfair advantage. I don't know if I'd color it. Well, yeah, unfair well, advantage. Well, it's just, yeah. you know, I use that, like when you were looking at 15 different industries, mm -hmm. inevitably you start to see trends, trends. In, in different industries mm -hmm. that I can apply. Mm -hmm. You know, like finance is very future oriented because a lot of competition. Mm -hmm. Healthcare, very slow. Innovations in healthcare, though, are more important uh -huh. than, than other ones in other, finance. Right. Okay. Logistics is something that touches everybody, but it's invisible. Right. So, you know, by understanding certain trends, a lot of it is a way of looking. Can that be taught? Some of it can. But for, I'll give you one principle. It's like okay. thinking about not just trends, but the convergence of trends. Mm -hmm. So an example would be, you know, baby boomers are getting uh, older. Mm -hmm. uh, what do they want? They want to live longer and healthier. Mm -hmm. What are they going to spend? Mm -hmm. Most of their money on living longer and healthier. What is that going to create? Mm -hmm. It's going to create a marketplace for a different kind of lifestyle, a different kind of health style, different kinds of leisure activities. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's having an, a, a business algorithm that's based on that you can defend to get to possible scenarios uh -huh. and then how my clients might provide that. Those are commercial algorithms. Right. Other algorithms are just things like climate change, world's getting warmer, there's more, uh, less global cooperation around climate change, 
likely there will be anomalous kinds of events that are going to cause disruptions. Mm -hmm. How do we think about that kind of chaos? How do you manage chaos? Those, so I try to think about things that my global clients, whether governments or corporations or entrepreneurs, haven't thought about because I'm looking at a very large system. I'm not just looking at you know, mobile or yeah, right. some industry. You're looking at every aspect of it. That's right, and it's not just me. I, I, I have a team, a team of people. Sure, sure. I have a global intelligence network around the world. I was in Kuala Lumpur two days ago. I'm in Poland today. I'll be back to San Francisco. So, uh, you know, if, I, if you were to do what I do with my models and tools and time, mm -hmm. you would maybe get to the same kind of conclusions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that I so it's 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 a combination of art and science and experience. Cool. Okay. Well, speaking of art, just to throw this in at the end, <laughs> there's there is a recent um, a recent uh, interview with Kanye, how he talks about how he's a futurist and he wants to get involved with with companies in a visionary like getting people to work together. Would you ever work with another futurist like Kanye? Yeah, I mean, I work, I work with all kinds of people all over the world. Yeah, sure. Or what do you think about him saying that he is a futurist because he sees the future? Do you, do you think you can maybe, maybe, hmm, maybe that's a silly question. <laughs> you know, I, I, I think that um, being a futurist, I'm not there to judge other futurists. I'm there to do good work and to be useful and to be visionary and to encourage others as a thought leader for them to be visionary. If somebody wants to call themselves a futurist, they got to deliver. They got to deliver. Now, That's you asked right. an important question. Uh, one of the key ingredients of being a futurist is you got to be more right than wrong. So when I began to forecast the internet, I, most of my clients, in all fairness, in 1989, thought I was crazy. Okay, and well, they see, thought, that's you know what? Most of my clients thought I was crazy when I forecast the future of mobile mm -hmm. or predictive analytics mm -hmm. or health that would be personalized or the use of DNA mm -hmm. for prediction. So I, most of the time, you have to be willing, even though I'm from San Francisco, I was born and raised in New York City, you have to be willing to face down your critics, you have to be willing to be bold and courageous, and you have to be more right than wrong. So, you know, you can't be somebody who's forecasting, you know, flying cars are going to be... You, the value of your forecasts has to... You have to be able to defend to them facts. when they're not popular. Mm -hmm. No, not facts. Not facts? Well, no, so because a lot how of... How do you defend it? You have to be able to follow, be convincing from a logic path to make an argument, mm -hmm. and then you have to be more right than wrong. And we've all made mistakes, but, you know, quite frankly, the value of your futurist forecast mm -hmm. determines if you're doing a good job or not. Anybody can call themselves anything they want. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, a lot of people do, but then you got to be able to stand by your results. Mm -hmm. Well, so what homework, this will be the last question, what homework do you do personally in order to prepare yourself to be able to defend these ideas? What do you do to kind of... Yeah, you well, just because you have this background, this huge, huge background that covers lots of different, lots of different areas. But on a daily basis, what are you doing? Well, you just what, read a lot, talk to people. I have uh, three levels of things I do mm -hmm. on a just about a daily, weekly basis. One is I uh, do a lot of interviewing who I think are are change makers or influencers, uh, and they may be either a consumer, they may be somebody who's you know kind of created a new innovation or somebody who's really deeply embedded in an industry, okay. right? So I do a lot of talking to people and listening. listening. You gotta listen, but you have to have a way of asking questions. questions. If you do not ask the right questions, you're not gonna get the right answers, right? Mm -hmm. And whatever you're looking for, you'll find what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So you gotta know, like, understand what problems are. That, then the question I asked in my presentation, are you future ready? Right. What is it gonna take to get you ready for the future? Mm -hmm. What does that mean in are terms of people? That? resources, structure, competition. I consult with companies, I ask that one question, I can build a whole conversation because most companies are not thinking, they're not future ready. And if you start to ask them, it shifts their thinking, actually it puts them in a place of envisioning the future that they want to shape. 
That's the first thing. So I do a lot of questions. I interact with a lot of people. I do read a lot and do research, but I'll also go to people who are doing primary research. And I'll want to know, like I, I talked to a fascinating uh, scientist who's working on time travel. Now you may say, gee, that's crazy, you know, but he's getting paid a lot of money to figure out, and he's, he's figured out, you know, he's measuring the early energies from the formation of the universe, and then he's measuring, you know, how that relates to dark, you know, dark energy, you know? So at the end of the day, it's like, wow. Now what does that have to do with anything? Well, I have news for you. Quantum technology, as I talked about, is the, is the trend nobody understands or has thought about. There's less than 100 people on the planet who understand it. I'm maybe one of them trying to understand it so I can translate it for you. Into other right. So I'll areas. read research, that's the second area. And the third is I have proprietary forecasting methodologies called Trend Tracker. So okay. I'll look at news okay. and then I'll analyze. I have, an, I have an analytic platform, a big data platform of, of analyzing different kinds of information mm -hmm. And then I'll build scenarios and possible stories, narratives about the future, about how our lives are changing and will be different. And then I'll play that out and see, gee, does that, does that really make sense? And then out of that, I'll be able to come up with what I think are some defensible positions and forecasts about what's coming. Very, thank you very much for, for, My pleasure. for spreading that knowledge, spreading, spreading the word. My um, pleasure. Yeah, innovation, James Canton. And if people want to know more, they can find out what we're doing at futureguru.com. Futureguru.com. All righty, excellent. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>